Tiller. Go on. Get after him, boy. Terry Simon. Come on. Come on. Come on. I think it's awful. It's going to break his legs. It isn't as terrible as it looks, Miss Castle. You see, the art of professional wrestling consists of two parts grown, two parts acting, and but one little part of skill. Hey! What kind of a crack is that? No offense, sir. I was just trying to reassure the lady. You see, she's scared. Well, she's got a right to be scared. You can't tell what's liable to happen. <laughs> Once I even got my jaw broke. Oh! He's down! Gee, thanks, pal. The winner, Twister McGurk over Sailor Sam, former champion of the West Indies. Hey, wait a minute. I've been framed. That little guy talked me out of this. Hey, you little beetle. It's your fault I lost this match. Hey, wait a minute, Santa. What's hey, the idea of picking uh, up? Get out of here. Now, just because you're so smart, I'm going to show you what real wrestling is. <laughs> Why, you little... <laughs> yeah, I've seen everything. But a little shrimp like you throwing a sailor, it gets me. The hold I used is very simple, but it has served me well on many occasions. If you was a pro, I could never get to be world's champion. You may depend on me retaining my amateur standing. Yeah, I could sure go places if I had a hole like that. Would you mind remonstrating it to me, Mr. Moto? It <laughs> would be a pleasure. Well, don't you think you better take off them cheaters? If I did, I couldn't see you. <laughs> Gee, I never thought of that. Attack me, please. Huh? Oh, here goes. <laughs> Gee, it's phenomenal. I'll bet you can't do it again, Mr. Moto. No, exactly. <laughs> Mr. Moto, what is it? What's the matter? You brute, you hurt him. Me hurt him? Mr. McGurk didn't hurt me. I, I must have strained my... Well, get the doctor for him, quick. Well, what do you think of that? I think it's serious. What time do we reach San Juan? Early tomorrow morning, miss. Then please see that this message is sent as quickly as possible. Yes, miss. Thank you. I can't accept any more excuses. These cheap South American diamonds are still being smuggled through Puerto Rico and flooding a world market. It's already become an international problem. And if it continues, diamond values will absolutely collapse. Meanwhile, a special investigator sent here from Washington is murdered almost before our eyes. Weeks pass, not an arrest is made. You didn't even find a clue, Colonel Castle. The Diamond Syndicate demands that we get to the bottom of all this, and I'm going to do it if it's my last official act as governor of Puerto Rico. The pressure is on me. They're after my scalp, and I don't intend to lose it. Colonel, I've given you and your police department a free hand in this case with no result. Now you've forced me to take emergency steps. We've covered every possible lead, John, and they've gotten us nowhere. All I can do is keep trying. Well, Governor, isn't it possible that the diamonds are smuggled through Panama or Cuba or any one of a dozen smaller islands? I think Commissioner Madero is right, Governor. Then how can we explain the murder of the investigator, Graham? George is right. Graham must have been on the trail of the smugglers right here. If the police department were efficiently handled, we'd be on the right trail, too. Why, on this island, which is only one-fourth the size of my home state. You can omit the oratory, Gordon. Everyone knows it's been your ambition to get my job. I can tell you one thing. If I were in charge here... Now, now, Gordon, we're not going to get anywhere fighting among ourselves. Tom, I know you've been under a very serious strain. Now, why don't you go away? Take a long rest. I've been in service over 25 years, John, and I know that when an officer is asked to take a long rest, it means resign. And I won't resign under fire. I didn't mean it like that, Tom. I... I won't do it, I tell you. I refuse to resign and leave the decks clear for your Mr. Moto. Moto? Is he coming? Well, that's news to me. Just a moment. Colonel, how did you know Mr. Moto was coming here to work with us? It's my business to know. Well, Governor, 
Well, Uncle John, don't you think it's a little unfair to Colonel Castle to bring in a private investigator? I agree with George that it's unfair to pick up... Sutter, you have no voice in this government. I beg your pardon, Governor. But I've got a big interest in this. My ships are suspected of being used by the smugglers. I worked with Colonel Castle through the whole thing, and I'm satisfied he's done his best. Well, for your information, I didn't send for Mr. Moto. He's been retained by the Diamond Syndicate, not me. And we've got to give him every cooperation. Come. No, it's for the governor. <clears throat> Gentlemen, our excitement has been a little premature. Mr. Moto came down with acute appendicitis aboard the San Juan not more than an hour ago. Well, that's fine news. Another investigator out even before he starts. Well, then, you may continue with the case, Colonel, for the present. Thanks. Gordon, make arrangements to have an ambulance meet the San Juan tomorrow. Tell the hospital to prepare for an emergency operation. Yes, sir. That's all, gentlemen. John, I, I want to apologize for flaring up the way I did. Well, that's all right, Tom. If there's, there's anything I can do to help, I mean about taking care of Moto. No, thanks. Besides, you'll be busy meeting your daughter. Joan, how did you know she was arriving? She sent a message. Oh. Look here, old man. You haven't received any other communication from Joan regarding Mr. Moto? No. All right. There she is. Hello. Dad, oh. I missed you so much. But Dad. You don't look awfully well. Is anything wrong? No, no, everything's fine. How's college? Oh, it's all right. But I'm so glad to be home. Say, young lady, don't you know me? I'm the man who say you're going to marry. Oh, they do, do they? Looks to me as though they were right. Governor! Uh-uh-uh. Say, uncle, after all, George is my nephew. Oh. <laughs> I'm next. Oh, hello there. Oh, discrimination, eh? <laughs> it certainly is great to have you home, Joan. This island is no jewel without you, no matter what the travel literature says. <laughs> Well, I'm glad for more reasons than one. Say, you people haven't been taking very good care of my father. He doesn't look well. He's been working too hard, Joan. We all think he should take a rest. Can't you forget that even for a minute? Dad, what's wrong? I'm sorry, sir. Hey, hurry up, will you? Gangway! Gangway! Oh, there's that poor Mr. Moto. Did you get my message? Yes, I have an ambulance waiting. We got a sick invalid here. Come on, folks, give us a fresh, won't you? Mr. Moto, this is Governor Bentley. It is a pleasure, Governor. I regret that I have to make my entrance into your beautiful country like a poor fish, packed in ice. We're all very sorry, Mr. Moto. And don't worry, we'll see that you get the best of attention. Thank you so much. Come on, boys, the ambulance is waiting. Come on, folks, out of the way. Please, out of the way. Easy now. Take it easy, boys. Take it easy. I'm sorry, but you're not allowed to ride the ambulance. Listen, he's my pal, and I go where he goes. You want to make something out of it? Don't argue about it. Get him to the hospital as fast as you can. All right, get going. Did it get here? Of course. It just took Mr. Motor to the hospital. They who? Two fellas hijacked our ambulance, slugged us, and left us in the road. And whoever they are, they've got your Mr. Motor. Where's the governor? They just left, sir. Come on, hurry up. To the government house, and hurry. Got him? 
Yeah, but we had to bring along his bodyguard, too. Uh... Hey, this is the funniest looking hospital I ever seen. Hey, Mr. Moto needs a doctor, quick. Hey, what is this? Get out of the way. Hey, just a minute, Shut up. Hey, this guy needs an operation. Don't worry, we'll operate. Well, Mr. Moto, you picked a bad time to get appendicitis. Unfortunately, we cannot select a time for our afflictions. Yeah, that's right. Now, tell us what you heard from this bird, Graham. You know who I mean, the detective who was shot. Shot? I was under the impression he was stabbed. You do know him. All right. He sent one report back to the States. What was in it? I'm so sorry, but that was confidential. You better talk, Moto. You haven't much time. You leave me little choice. To die from appendicitis or a bullet. Why, you... Hey, be careful, Mr. Moto. Remember your appendix. I hope. You didn't come any too soon, Governor. Couldn't your men trace the ambulance? Well, we followed as fast as we could, but they gave us the slip. We didn't know where you were until we heard a shot. Oh, certainly it's beyond me how they found out you were supposed to be a sick man. I hope to learn that. By the way, Governor, is this your rainy season? No. I didn't think so. Hey, lay off of you guys. This is a stupendous here. Here's one of them, Governor. Hey, Mr. Moto, will you tell these guys who I am? This is Mr. McGurk, my friend. All right, Sergeant. Uh, Mr. McGurk is on a wrestling tour. Uh, didn't I tell you, Bright Eyes? Hey, Mr. Moto, what about your appendix? Did it bust? Appendix? Oh, that useless member of my anatomy was removed ten years ago. Anatomy? Anatomy? Well, I'll... Oh, why, kids, why is you on a case? Exactly. And I owe it to you that I am still on it. Oh, it's a mere bagatelle. Take that number. Uh, Governor, will you please provide Mr. McGurk with an escort to the boat? Why, oh, certainly, Sergeant. Hey, just a minute now. Nobody can take pot shots at me and get away with it. I'm in this to the finish. Uh, permit me to remind you, Mr. McGurk, that your own job is far less dangerous. Oh, you're telling me. But this is personal now. I don't like that gang. And besides, it breaks up the monopoly of the trip. Oh, uh... Say, Mr. Moto, I ain't got that hold down yet. I tried on one of them guys and something must have went wrong. Uh, would you mind showing it to me again? I'll be glad to. Excuse me, please. Come on, Twister, attack me. Gee, you know, it's stupefying. It's hey, attacked a lot, Mr. Moto. Think nothing of it. Hey! I gotta get my baggage off that ship before it sails. Come on, Bright Eyes. See you later. <laughs> Governor, we trailed them down to the water, but they had too much of a start. They got away in a boat. Well, that's too bad. Well, I'm afraid your scheme to trap the smugglers didn't work, after all. To a certain extent, it did. What do you mean? It proved what I suspected, that there was a leak in your office. These men were only carrying out orders from someone higher up. In my office? That's impossible. Did you inform your associates of my appendicitis as we planned? Yes, but these men are all honest. The idea of any of them being mixed up in this is preposterous. Uh, nevertheless, I should like to question all these uh, honest men. So, these governor are the men that have your confidence? Yes, Mr. Moto wants to ask you some questions. <laughs> I suppose we should have expected you to make a spectacular entrance on our island, Mr. Moodle. So your appendicitis was just a gag? Uh, yes, just a gag, Mr. Sutter. 
Oh, you know me. Well, I feel honored. Uh, please don't. You see, I've had your photographs and other information for several weeks. Did you send him our fingerprints too, Governor? Mr. Muller didn't ask for them. I'm so sorry to think that one of you gentlemen betrayed me. What do you mean, mean by that? that? Please, you th please. I, I mean unintentionally, of course. But uh, you see, only you gentlemen here knew of my appendicitis. Perhaps each one of you will be kind enough to tell me when you first learned I was coming to Puerto Rico. Well, I can assure you that no one here knew until yesterday, except, of course, Colonel Castle. I'm sorry, Uncle John, but I knew almost as soon as he had sailed. You see, Miss Castle radioed me and mentioned your being on board. Uh, oh, so? And did you mention this intelligence to anyone else? I naturally showed the message to Colonel Castle. But naturally. That's true. And I assumed that you were coming here on business. You showed it to no one else. No one. But wait a minute. When Commissioner Gordon gave it to me, the envelope was unsealed. I saw it. I opened it by mistake, thinking it was for the governor. And a perfectly natural mistake, their last names being the same. Uh, do you usually open the governor's messages? Well, no. That is, I'm authorized to when the governor's not here. You still have the message, Mr. Bentley? No, I haven't. I misled it, I guess. Was there anyone here who didn't know? Yeah, as a matter of fact, Governor, I probably knew sooner than anyone except you. The San Juan is one of my ships, and a complete passenger list is waiting you to my office before she clears from New Orleans. That is strange. I booked passage at the last moment. My name was not on the list. Not on the printed list, but as a ticket holder, I knew of your presence on board. Oh, of course. Uh, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Madero, did you know? Know what? Of my sailing, the question and the discussion. I did not know. Oh, this isn't getting us anywhere. Get the gang that kidnapped you and you've got the diamond smugglers. Oh, but the leader, who could then create another gang? Is this a private conference or are we broadcasting? Where does this land lead to? To my office. Is anyone there? Well, Mr. Lacoste is awaiting, but uh, his appointment with Governor Bentley was postponed. Who is Mr. Lacoste? Native planter makes most of his money exporting citrus fruits and coconuts. I can't understand. Lacoste, were you listening at this? I couldn't help it with the key open. You could have shut it off. <laughs> it was too interesting. You have a hard job ahead of you, Mr. Moto. You wouldn't have arranged to have the line open, would you, Lacoste? I wouldn't go around accusing people, Sutter, when you can't account for your own actions. What do you mean? I mean you haven't yet explained how you just happened to be the first one on the scene when Graham was murdered. Why? You... Now, gentlemen, I don't think this is the time or place for you to air your personal prejudices. Do you ship your produce on Mr. Sutter's boats? Well, at present, I'm obliged to, but... Well, I'll be going. Please, Mr. Lacoste, you've heard so much already. Wouldn't you care to join us? With pleasure. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon, sir. Colonel, what is that? Junior, who are we? Can't keep this right now. Hey, Mr. Muller, him give him a me for these mugs. Please release him, Colonel. He's my assistant. Self-appointed. All right, Sergeant, let him go. Yes, Colonel? So you wouldn't believe me, huh? You didn't tell me where we were stopping. So I thought I'd find you here. I figured it out by myself. No. Congratulations, Mr. McGurr. Oh, that's all right. Say, are these mugs okay? Uh, sit down. Perhaps you can help me find out. Wait a minute. Should a rank outsider be taken into our confidence this way? A rank outsider? Please. If it hadn't been for Mr. McGurk, I might have fared badly today. My apologies. I don't know. Yet. You mentioned the death of my unfortunate predecessor, Graham. I think Mr. Sutter would know more about that. He was killed with a knife, a deep thrust through the heart. I found his body in the garden just outside. There were no fingerprints on the knife. They're very easy to wipe away. Yes, murderers are becoming fingerprint conscious. Was it perhaps the knife that uh, is missing from this cupboard? Missing? Well, that's funny. The knife was clean and returned to its scabbard after the investigation. I'm sure I saw it there this morning. Uh, do the rest of you remember seeing it lately? Well, I really didn't pay any attention. Well, I, I put it back there with my own hands. Well, I don't come in here very often. I wouldn't know. It seems clear that uh, whoever took it the first time has taken it again and intends uh, using it again. 
beautifully balanced knife. Where did you get them, Governor? I gave them to the Governor. They're antique, possibly dating back to the days when pirates terrorized the Caribbean Sea. So very interesting. And where did you get them? From a Chinese peddler. You know a lot about knives, don't you, brother? Yes. Oh. Gentlemen, you are all so very frank that I can learn nothing. It would be unfair to keep you any longer. That is all, then. Except that I hope you can forget your worries long enough to honor me with your company tonight. George and I have arranged a welcome home party for Miss Castle. Gee, thanks. That's swell. Thank you, Thank you very much, Governor. Oh, Governor, did Mr. Graham leave anything among his personal effects that might provide some small clue? Only these. I don't think you'll find them very much help. You can take them. Thank you. Brother, it ain't cold. My personal business doesn't concern you. Oh, yes, it does. I'll just take a gander at that paper. Jake. Oh, yes, Mr. Graham took out several books and never returned them. We haven't any other copies, and it's most annoying. If people would only realize the true value of books and not take them away from the library, other people come in for it, then so. we can't give them to uh, them. Quite so. Uh, please, could you tell me the names of the books? Yes, I have them right here. Early Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico in the Pirate Days, The Great Salinas Swamp, and Black Tarrant. Black Tarrant? Yes, he was a famous pirate. He used the Salinas Swamp as a hiding place. That's the guy we're looking for. He's been dead 300 years. Oh, gee, that's an awful long time. Please, where is that swamp? Oh, just the other side of Point Salinas. I should say about five or six miles east of town. You go out of the library, Thank turn to the right, get to the Thank harbor, and a man in a boat will take you up. Oh. Read any good books lately, sister? been dead for 300 years. It's a cinch he ain't gonna do us no good. No, but the Selena Swamp may prove very interesting. Boss, you all ain't going to no Selena Swamps, is you? Yes, why not? But I just thought you was going for a present cruise. Didn't tell me nothing about no swamp. What's the matter with the swamp, buddy? Nothing, it's just haunted. Haunted? With what? Just what any place is haunted with. Ghost. Ghost? Oh, it's really a silly superstition. It ain't, Senate. Plenty of people goes in the swamp, and nobody ever sees them live again. Say, Mr. Mono, are you sure we ought to investigate the swamp? Yes, quite sure. How far is it? Just around the points, sir. But then turn in to shore. All right, boss. We's all going to be fitted for the coffin. Craven. Hey, these mosquitoes must take on my banquet. What are we here for anyway, Moto? To get this? Gee, you mean to say we come all this way just to get a load of mud? It may contain something very important. Yeah, you know that's interesting. I always yearn to be a defective. You know, I want to get a line of work where I can use my brains instead of my muscles. Yes, but I think we'll need your muscles now. Let's see whether we can push off.
I'm afraid you'll have to jump out and give us a shove. Who, me? Yes, you. Our pilot at present is useless. Well, all right. I've seen a ghost, a wet one. The electric plug in the bathroom don't work. I can't shave. Try my razor. Okay. Oh, no thanks, pal. Hey, did you find anything in that mud pies? Oh, yes. Observe, Twister. This is the mud from the shoes of our kidnappers. And this is from the swamp. It looks like the same mud to me. Quite so. It's identical. You know, the same vegetable and mineral matter. It proves that our kidnappers came from the Selena swamp. She got that from some mud? Oh, what a case. It also proves that the unfortunate Mr. Graham was killed because he showed too great an interest in that swamp. Say, that puts us both on a spot too, don't it? Would you like to withdraw from the case? Me? Not on your life. It's getting me, pal. Come. Shall I run your bath, sir? What for? I just took a shower. You may run one for me. My skin's too tender for a common, ordinary razor. He's dead. Dead? But how? Nobody else was here. Who did it? Stop! Don't touch anything. That accounts for the dead connection when you attempted to shave. Well, what's that? Don't you understand? Someone wanted to electrocute me when I bathed. You mean he touched them wires? That wasn't necessary. You see, water is also an efficient conductor of electricity, and by connecting the wires from this plug to those pipes, the murderer created an electrical current fatal to anybody who set hand or foot into the water. She. Just like sitting in a hot seat, huh? Well, being struck by lightning. Poor guy. He took the rap for us. Oh, Carlos. Yes, miss? Hasn't my father come in yet? No, miss. Well, perhaps you'd better call him at the office and remind him of the governor's party tonight. I did call some time ago, but they said he left for home. Well, thank you. Yes, I went for a walk. Oh, don't bother about my things. I'm not going. Not going to my party. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. I, I'm too tired. 
poor dad. Why don't you take a vacation? We could go away somewhere, just you and me. And... So George has won you over too, eh? George? This is my own idea. Please, Dad. Something has happened since I've been away. Won't you tell me? What is this diamond smuggling business? Sometimes Bentley acts as though he thought I was mixed up in it. They all do. They want me to quit and take the whole blame. Well, I'm not going to. Now listen to me, young man. All they're thinking about is your health. You're imagining the rest of it. Now, come on and get dressed. Or we'll be late. Well, this is one time you'll have to excuse me, Joan. I'm sorry. Oh, madame, how can you mention such a prosaic thing as my work to the accompaniment of this exquisite dance music, especially when my assistant, Mr. McGurk, is a jitterbug of the first water? Oh, Mr. Moore. Madame, he is superb. Really, Mr. McGurk? Oh, how refreshing. You know, most of the men around here think the Foxtrot's still the latest thing. <laughs> Look here, Miss Castle, don't you think you could spare me just one dance? A most understandable request. Thank you. George, I want to talk to you first. Say, this is romantic. I'm sorry it wasn't my idea. George, tell me something. Anything. You're beautiful, darling. Your eyes are no, like No, seriously. The... Why is Governor Bentley, and you too, so anxious that Father resign? Well, we don't want him to resign. All we're thinking about is his health. He's worrying himself to pieces over this smuggling case. You don't think that, that he's involved in it, do you? Involved in it? Why, of course not. Oh, I knew you didn't. But he thinks that you do, and it's getting him down. Well, I guess it's just Uncle John's official manner. He can even turn a bridge game or a set of tennis into a court martial for his partner. <laughs> you ought to know. I do. But I don't see why we should talk about Uncle John tonight. There are so many more interesting things to take up. For instance? Well, <clears throat> do you suppose we're intruding? <laughs> now that that's over, don't you remember promising this dance to me? Did I? No, you promised it to me. Oh, I really don't remember. You're both out of luck. It's my dance. Now, look here. You're a host. I'm a guest. The dance is definitely mine. I'll yield. Underground of all notches. <laughs> <laughs> you might as well get used to this, George. It's the price you've got to pay for picking such a popular girl. Governor, may I have a word with you? Certainly. I'd rather speak to you alone. If this is business, you'd better see me officially. Well, I've been trying to see you officially for some time. On behalf of the planters. You're not playing fair with us, Governor. I haven't heard any complaints except from you. Well, the others are afraid to protest on account of Sutter's influence with you. He's squeezing the life out of us with his ruinous freight rates. This is a serious charge, Lacosta. I can bring you all the proof you need. This is a matter that calls for investigation. I'll let you know. I want immediate action. Mr. LaCosta, aren't you forgetting yourself? Perhaps I am. My apologies, Governor. Interesting collection, don't you think, Mr. Moto? All historical pieces, most of them belong to our A number one pirate. Uh, Black Tarrant? Did he ever catch that gentleman? Never. He always mysteriously got away, ships and all. I never could find his hiding place. Uh, you mean the uh, Great Selena Swamp? <laughs> well, I see you're up on our history. Oh, yes, I've been well occupied today. 
but you did promise me the next. Oh, that old map of the Salina Swamp. May I examine it, Governor? Certainly. Now, you don't really expect to find a clue to the case in that swamp. Mr. Motor, I must warn you. Don't go near that place. And why, please? Well, the natives are very touchy about it. They believe it's haunted with the ghost of Black Tyrant and his pirate crew. <laughs> there he goes again. Ghosts? Of course, I don't put any belief in them. You say, Mr. Motu, it isn't just ghosts you have to contend with, but the superstitions of a dangerously ignorant people. Oh, so? Governor, Colonel Castle on the telephone. Pardon me. Excuse us. Yes, Colonel. Listen, John, I'm coming over. I've got to see you right away, but privately. It's important. All right, Tom. Well, yes, of course. Well, uh, meet me upstairs in my room. Right away. Goodbye. Shall we dance? Governor, may you keep this man for a while? Why, certainly. You'll excuse me. I think it was rather indiscreet of you to mention an interest in the swamp. You think so? I happen to know. Graham had that idea, too, just before he was killed. Yes. I saw you at the library today. I often go there. However, this is just a friendly warning. I'm very grateful indeed, uh, Mr. Sutter. Oh, I'm having such a wonderful time, Mr. McGurk. Uh, will you be with us long? Well, uh... Right now, I got my doubts. <laughs> oh, excuse me, Mrs. Brown. I got a date with a guy about a kick on the jaw. It's awful important. My good. Nice night for a stroll. Fought like a tiger. The next time it'll be a different story. Now listen, the new shipment is ready to go on board tonight. Meet me at the usual. I've got it. Look, Joan, I've got it. Hello, 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 operator. Listen, I was disconnected. I was talking to the governor's. Oh no, no, never mind. Where's your Uncle John? Why, what's wrong? We've got to find him. It's dreadfully important. Gordon, you know where the governor is? Why, yes, he went up to his room. What's up? Search me. Uncle John. Dad. Dad! It's the same knife that disappeared from Uncle John's office. You were right, Moto. You said the murderer would use the knife again. The knife shows only one set of fingerprints. They are Colonel Castle's. I told you they'd be mine. 
I came in here to wait for Governor Bentley, thinking he was still downstairs. When I flashed on the lights, there he was on the floor. In my excitement, I took hold of the knife. I wasn't thinking about fingerprints. I was only thinking about my friend. I wanted to find out if he was alive or... Steady, oh. Tom. I'm sorry, Colonel, but your story won't stand up against this evidence. He couldn't have. He didn't. Please, Joe. Well, I got my own theory, and it don't concern the Colonel. Why was it so important for you to see the governor tonight? I came here to resign. And wouldn't the morning have done just as well? No. When I finally decided it was the only thing to do, I wanted to get it over with as quickly as possible. I see, yeah. Please stop asking him questions, Mr. Moto. Can't you see he's ill? Mr. Sutter, will you help me take my father home? I'll be glad to. Now, wait a minute. I'm responsible here now, and I just can't let him walk out like this. You don't have to worry about me. I'll be here when you want me. Commissioner, I'm quite sure the Colonel is a man of his word. Well, all right. You're picking on the wrong guy. Listen to me, will you, please? I got my own theory. And if you ask me, this Madero's your man. No one's asking you. Well, I'm talking anyway. I found him when he left the party flat and sneaked upstairs. I lost him. By accident. And I think he came in here and killed the governor. Why didn't you tell us this before? Well, gee, I've been trying to. What about this, Madero? I knew of the colonel's appointment with the governor. I had hoped to prevent trouble. But this oaf... Oaf! If that's an insult... Mr. Madeira, uh, you anticipate the trouble? Yes. I knew that Colonel Castle deeply resented Bentley's request that he resign. I see. Uh, by the way, would it be possible to throw this knife, say, from the hall into this room? Yes, for an expert. And I understand you are an expert. There are dozens of men on this island who could have pinned his ears back. He's asleep now. That's good, and I think you ought to have a little of the same. Oh, I can't. Mr. Sutter, I had a reason for asking you to come home with me. Look. Tonight, I found these diamonds with Dad's things. With his things? I don't understand. And that isn't all. Tonight, at the governor's house, I picked up the phone to call Dad. And I heard someone talking about a new shipment of diamonds that was ready to go on board, he said. At the governor's house? Who was it? I didn't recognize his voice. Who was he talking to? I don't know. I only heard the one voice. Then whoever he was talking to hung up. Then it must have been someone at the party. But, Joan, this is important. Why didn't you tell somebody? I was afraid. Gordon thinks Dad guilty anyway. He would have thought that, that it was Dad on the telephone. Perhaps you're right, but we can't conceal such vital evidence. I think Mr. Moto should have it. What'll I do? Let me take these. Try not to worry too much, Joan. Meanwhile, stay close to your father until you hear from me. Good night, Joan. Well, here's your clinching evidence. Castle's our man. The phone call, Joan heard proves it. Governor Bentley heard him talking, and Castle had to kill him. Do you think Joan would have mentioned the call if her father was on this end of it? Nonsense. Look here, Gordon, isn't it possible someone could have planted those diamonds in Castle's house? Yeah, quite so. Someone who wished to divert suspicion from himself. Oh, you're all too easy on him. I hate this as much as anyone, but facts are facts. I'm going to send the police for him. You think you should? He's a very sick man. That doesn't excuse him. Commissioner, wouldn't it be wiser to question him quietly before making an arrest that would create a scandal? Very well. Hey, wait a minute. How did the Colonel explain having the diamonds? We didn't ask him. He was asleep. It does appear they left in a hurry. Well, I hope you're all satisfied. They must have been taken away by force. Yes, and waited around while they packed up half their things. I ought to hold you responsible for this. We should have arrested Castle last night. Hello, give me police headquarters. Hello, Sergeant. Commissioner Gordon speaking. Emergency order. I want all San Juan searched for Colonel Castle and his daughter. Watch the docks and airports. 
You heard me, Colonel Castle. Arrest him. The charge is murder. Moto, I'm going to have you taken off this case. You bungled things right from the start. So sorry, Commissioner. Hey, listen. And if you know what's healthy, you'll go back to wrestling. Mr. Gordon. Mr. Gordon. Well, what do you want? Uh, I, I thought this might be important. Arrest that man. What? And his accomplice. Accomplice? What's that? May I ask for an explanation? Well, what is it, Gordon? This cable was sent from New York to Governor Bentley. Have just learned notorious criminal Shamuro in Puerto Rico posing as me. Hold him until my arrival. We'll be on tomorrow's plane. Signed, Moto. Well, Mr. Moto, I thought there was something phony about you right from the start. You and your trained gorilla. Who, me? Now, just a minute. Take him away. Lock him up. I got it! Come on, twist it! being we are safe. Yeah. It may be safe to you, but it ain't to me. Look, Mr. Morrow, whoever you are, you certainly done me a dirty trick. Here I was, an honest guy in an honest business. And now look at me. A hundred criminal. It's time I confess, Twister. I caused that cablegram to be sent. Yeah, one minute, just Samira and a... You did it? Why? One can obtain a confidence of criminals when one is branded a criminal. Yeah, but I branded too. Well, you insisted on being with me. You may still withdraw from the case. How can I when I'm up to my neck in it like this? <laughs> you are right. By this time, we are on the newspaper headlines anyway. Gee, I ain't never been on the front page before. Undoubtedly, they picture us as a pair of bloodthirsty fiends. Yeah? Well, where do us fiends go from here? Well, for a little excursion. In this boat, which we'll borrow when night comes. Watch out for the quicksand. You're telling me. Tomorrow, this place sure gives you the creeps. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's quicksand. It's quick, all right. It sure sucks you down. What do you want? See your captain. He ain't here. Will is in charge. We'll see him. Go ahead. to Grant. He'll know how to find out. Get going.
You've got to get a doctor for my father. We can't bring a doctor in here. But he's running a fever. You'll have to wait. Dad's too sick to wait. When Captain Dolan brought us here, he said that Mr. LaCosta would take care of everything. Mr. Moto. Good evening, everybody. He's a detective. He's come here to arrest my father. You can't take him. He was framed. Please, you promised to protect us until Dad is proved innocent. Don't be so alarmed. Moto was only an impersonation. Very convenient for the moment. I... I don't understand. Just a penny ante gangster playing detective. Mr. You murdered the governor. It was you who framed my father. Now we can go back to San Juan. This proves Dad innocent. Sure, sure. Now you get back to your cabin and look after that fever. I'll take care of this. But we can't waste any time. Bill, take her back to her cabin. All right, now. How'd you get here? Oh, on a boat. Don't be funny. Did the police follow you? Not us, brother. We gave them the slip. Quiet. What's your racket, anyway? None at the moment, but uh, we were hoping to get into a good one. Diamonds? What do you know about diamonds? I prefer to discuss that with Captain Darlin, if you don't mind my waiting. Certainly not. Just make yourself at home, tough guy. Hey, you... Good night, Phil. Hey, I thought you said if one wanted to gain the confidence of thieves, one had to be branded as a criminal. Well, we're branded all right, but they ain't got no confidence in us. No. Apparently not. Oh, why don't you give them the old one-two back there? We could have made a break for it. Twister is a fighter, you should know there are times when it's wiser to show weakness in the first round so that one can win in the last. Yeah, but this is the last round and we ain't winning. What a predicament. <laughs> we should have never taken up this life of crime. Don't be blinded by our present danger, Twister. Actually, it is a great success. Huh? We have uncovered many interesting facts. We know that Colonel Castle is innocent and... Whoever is behind his running away wanted him to look guilty. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but what good is it if we can't do nothing about it? When Darwin gets back, they're going to put us on the spot. Maybe, but uh, Darwin isn't back yet. Good night, buddy. Let's get them out of there and scram. No. They are safe enough for the moment. We have urgent business to take care of first. Follow me.
Hello. Hello. Everything okay? I don't know. That phony Moto and his pal showed up. Moto? He's no phony. Well, what about the papers? They said... Where is he? We got him under guard. Come on. Uh, gee. I can't figure out any place where they'd hide a flock of diamonds in here. What is it? Gee, can you imagine? But how do they get the diamonds in there? Don't you see? They temporarily removed one eye of the coat. Get into that small boat, quick it. Hurry up. his daughter disappear, Moto or Shimura or whatever his name is, runs out right under your noses and you can't find anyone. Now get out and bring him in. Yes, sir. What kind of a staff have we got here? Hey, Washington, you're on the telephone, sir. Hello. This is Commissioner Gordon in Puerto Rico. Where's Moto? He was supposed to be in on today's plane. Where is he? There must be some mistake. Why, Moto's been down there for a week already. Well, we got a cable saying that man was Shimura, a crook impersonating Moto. And when we tried to nab him, he got away. What do he look like? Well, he's short. Round face, not much over five feet tall, big eyes, always wears glasses. <laughs> That's Moto, all right. Turning fugitive is just one of his tricks. What? You mean to say? Sure. He's worked that one before. Even pretended that he escaped from Devil's Island. Just sit tight. He'll turn up. Oh. He says this Shimura really is Moto. This is strictly diffusion of autocracy. Oh. Definitely lends so. I'm going to talk to my congressman about this. We got him, sir. Release him. But you just told us. I him. just told you to release them. Let him go. Come on. Never mind. I know everything. I just talked to Washington. Also? Of course, we realize it's none of our business, but would you mind telling us where you've been? Oh, in a Salinas swamp. Just renewing an old acquaintance with my would-be kidnapper, Captain Darlin. Captain Darlin? Well, that name sounds familiar. But Darlin used to work for me. He was a captain on one of my ships until I beached him for dishonesty. Oh. You can consider yourselves fortunate to be still alive. Brother, you never said a truer word. You have a fast boat equipped for a possible fight. Yes, but there is no time to lose. We have to get back to the swamp at once. What, again? With them soypits? Not me. Me for the showers. Sure, you didn't dream all this? I have no nightmares. Is Joan all right? She was when I left her. You say a channel leads into the swamp? Yes, it should be right here. The channel is completely screened by overhanging branches. That is how your pirate Black Tarrant always used to vanish. Look! Captain, follow that boat. Aye, sir. Full speed ahead. Steady as she goes. Aye, aye.
take him alive. I see. Look out! He's going to rob us! Didn't I tell you not to shoot, gentlemen? And let him take pot shots at us? I'm sorry I got excited. He caught me in the wrist. We should get him to a hospital immediately. Let's go. Are you all right, sir? Fortunately, the bullet just squeezed my wrist. Congratulations, Mr. Motor. We heard you caught the ringleader of the smugglers. Mr. LaCosta, you'll be interested to know that it was Captain Darlin, a competitor of yours in a coconut trade. Why, I didn't know. How's Captain Darlin? He's resting quietly. Well, when can we see him? It is vitally important, Doctor, that we talk to him as soon as possible. I can't have you questioning him now. At least give him time to recover some of his strength. Uh, shall we see tonight at uh, about 8 o'clock? Very well. Uh, gentlemen, if Darlin will talk, we should have our solution tonight. You will all return, please, at 8 o'clock. George. How's your father? Oh, he's much better. But they've arrested him. Now, nah, don't you worry. When Darlin talks, he'll clear him, I'm sure. She's stuffy in here. Well, that ain't the heat, it's the humility. I'm gonna get a little air. I'll be back in a minute. It's almost 8 o'clock, Doctor. May I bring them in? I'll let you know, Mr. Moto. More adrenaline. Yes, Let me know as soon as he shows a reaction. Yes, God. Sutter! Are you sure? My motor, you... I can't believe it. Your aim with the knife was true for the third time, Mr. Sutter. You, you mean he killed Bentley and Graham, too? Yes, exactly. 
You see, first Sutter uh, had to eliminate Graham because uh, his research was leading him to his trail in the swamp. When Colonel Castle started his investigation, you as his friend pretended to help him. No wonder your father's hands were tired, since Sutter knew in advance every move he was making. It also was Mr. Sutter who arranged the reception for me on my arrival. And when Darlin and his man failed to kill me, you converted my bathtub into an instrument of death. That's right. I was there. He almost cut short my career. Darlin was foolish enough to call you at the ball, to telephone you of my escape. And unfortunately for the governor, he came upon you by surprise, so you killed him. A fine string of guesses, Mr. Moto. But you can't prove one of them. On the contrary, when you threw that knife into Darlin tonight, you proved them all. But how? He was afraid that Darlin might talk, so he shot him today against my orders. And tonight you employed your remarkable skill with a knife. But you didn't have to go this far to catch you, Mr. Moto. You let Sutter kill a helpless man. Captain Darlin was already dead when I reached his side in the boat this morning. You really shouldn't have killed him twice, Mr. Sutter. Take him away. Well, Mr. Moto, I've got a lot to apologize for, but first, congratulations. Thank you. I shall see you all before I leave Puerto Rico. Goodbye, Good night. Good night. Well, Twister, here is where we part. You've been a great help, and I want to thank you. And I want to thank you, too, pal. The hold you showed me, I'm going to keep my resting preparatory. You've mastered it? And how? I tried it on my Darrell and a weight swell. Oh, so? Sure, I'll show you. Come on, attack me. Gee, it's sure bewildering. Uh -huh. 